Have you ever noticed how stars seem to twinkle? Stable one moment and flickering the next? What if one night you looked up and one of the brightest stars simply vanished? Now imagine that it didn't just fade away, but exploded in a spectacle of light and energy that could outshine the moon. In this video, we're unraveling the cosmic mystery of what happens when a nearby star, specifically the star Betelgeuse, doesn't just twinkle, but goes full supernova. And the consequences? Well, they could be closer to home than you think. So who, or what, is Betelgeuse? You might recognize the name as that of a mischievous character from a Tim Burton film. But today, we're talking about a star, one of the most captivating stars we can see from Earth. Betelgeuse sits approximately 700 light years away in the constellation of Orion. When we talk about its size, we're talking about a celestial behemoth so vast that it could contain more than 700 of our suns inside of it. Imagine, if you will, a celestial Russian nesting doll, where our sun is the tiny figure at the center, and Betelgeuse is the massive outer layer that encloses it all. Beyond its immense size, Betelgeuse also boasts an astounding surface temperature of around 6,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's comparable to an unending volcanic eruption, but on a galactic scale. And the real kicker about Betelgeuse its instability. As stars age, they don't just keep fusing hydrogen into helium. They venture into creating heavier elements, like carbon and oxygen, all the way until they reach iron. And that's the point of no return, because fusing iron consumes more energy than it generates. The star, in essence, begins to dig its own grave. Once that line is crossed, gravity takes over, and Betelgeuse will eventually collapse under its own weight followed by an epic explosion, a supernova. But the real question is, when will this astronomical spectacle occur? Given the vast time scales of the universe and the 700 year delay in the light reaching us, the suspense hangs in the night sky like an unsolved riddle. So we've established that Betelgeuse is a ticking cosmic time book. But what happens when the clock stops ticking? Would Earth be in the path of cosmic destruction? or would we be mere spectators to one of the universe's most awe-inspiring events? Firstly, it's worth mentioning that the energy released by a supernova is staggering. To give you an idea, the energy emitted in a single second would be more than our sun will produce in its entire lifetime. Think about that. It's like taking all of the energy from every car, plane, and power plant on Earth, multiplying it by millions, and then condensing it into a single, blinding flash of light. But here's the reassuring part we're far enough away. At 700 light years from Earth, the explosion wouldn't cause direct physical harm to our planet. So no, it's not an Armageddon scenario, but it's not entirely a non-event either. Betelgeuse's swan song light up our sky like nothing we've ever seen before. For a few weeks, the supernova could be so bright that it would be visible even during the daytime, turning night into twilight. Imagine taking a midnight stroll and casting a shadow without any streetlight. The other fascinating aspect is what it could teach us. A close supernova would provide an unprecedented scientific opportunity to study the life and death of stars, offering clues about the universe's history, its expansion, and maybe even its fate. Last but not least, let's not forget about the cosmic afterglow. Long after the initial spectacle, the remnants of the supernova would continue to evolve and expand providing a constantly changing celestial backdrop that could be visible for years or maybe even decades. And in a way, that longevity will make it a part of our culture, a part of our collective human experience. It's like a cosmic art exhibit, except the artist is the universe itself and the canvas is the night sky. So we've covered the staggering scale of Betelgeuse's impending finale, but let's get a bit more personal. How might the explosion of a star 700 light years away resonate with you and me? right here on Earth. In a way, it's like a cosmic reality check, showing us that even the mightiest things have their end. Consider this. The second Betelgeuse explodes, it sends out neutrinos, tiny, elusive particles that rush through the universe, barely interacting with anything. What's wild is that these neutrinos would arrive here on Earth before the light from the explosion itself. Even crazier, they'd pass right through us without us even noticing. You'd be having coffee, watching TV, or maybe even sleeping, and wham, a wave of particles from a star's death would zip right through your body. It's a humbling thought. It's like getting an important email you can't open, or like knowing a celebrity waved at you, but you missed it because you blinked. 
for that fleeting moment, you'd be part of something much, much bigger, but you wouldn't even know it. Now, imagine how that might make us rethink our daily concerns. Missed a bus? Failed a test? Frustrated at work? These things start to feel less world-ending when you consider that we've just witnessed the literal end of a world, or at least a star far, far away. And let's not forget the stories we tell. The supernova would become the stuff of legends, inspiring new myths and folklore for this century. Just as ancient civilizations looked to the skies for signs and omens, we'd have our very own cosmic event to debate, interpret, and weave into the tapestry of human culture. So, in its final act, Betelgeuse wouldn't just be lighting up the night sky, it'd also be shining a light on our place in the universe, reminding us that we're part of something way bigger than ourselves, even when we don't realize it. So we've delved into the physical effects of a Betelgeuse supernova and how it could resonate on a personal or even philosophical level. But let's get even more practical. What about technology? Could the cosmic pyrotechnics mess with our gadgets? Is your Netflix binge watch session safe? The answer is mostly yes. The electromagnetic waves emitted by a supernova wouldn't really have the punch to interfere with our satellites or electrical grids from 700 light years away. But the event could produce something else that's intriguing, cosmic rays. These high energy particles often make their way into the solar system and have been known to interfere with electronics. Now, the cosmic rays from Betelgeuse would likely be too diffused by the time they reach us to cause any real havoc, so your smartphone is probably safe. But there's a catch. Our outer atmosphere would absorb some of these particles, and that could lead to some seriously amped up auroras, or the northern and southern lights. Imagine those stunning natural light shows, but supercharged and more widespread. You might even see them in places you'd never expect. And here's where it gets interactive. This celestial event could offer the perfect opportunity for citizen science. With simple tools and apps, amateur astronomers and curious individuals could contribute valuable data. You might even be able to track changes in the auroras or capture unusual atmospheric events with just your smartphone camera. In essence, the dying gasp of Betelgeuse would not just be a marvel to observe. It could become a participatory event, a universal moment we all share and contribute to. And in the age of social media, you bet those images and observations would go viral. A TikTok dance trend might even emerge. The Beetlejuice boogie, maybe? In this way, the supernova serves as more than a mere celestial occurrence. It becomes a global, perhaps even a galactic, community event. For once, everyone on Earth would be looking at the same thing at the same time, united by the sheer awe of the... Now, Beyond our immediate surroundings, let's ponder a larger question. How does Betelgeuse's supernova fit into the cosmic narrative? After all, stars have life cycles, like living beings. They're born, they age, and they eventually meet their end. So what's the afterlife of a star like? When massive stars like Betelgeuse reach the end of their life cycles, their explosive deaths can lead to the birth of something just as awe-inspiring, a black hole or a neutron star. These are not just leftovers, they're entirely new states of matter formed under extreme conditions. Imagine squeezing Earth down to the size of a marble, but retaining all its mass. That's the kind of density we're talking about in a neutron star. Meanwhile, a black hole is a place where gravity pulls so much that light can't even escape its grasp. It's like the universe's ultimate magic trick. Now you see it, now you don't. But it's not just about these stellar remnants. The material expelled by the supernova doesn't just vanish, it spreads out, seeding the cosmos with elements like carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. These are the very elements essential for life. That means the atoms in your body right now, they may have come from the explosive death of ancient stars. It's poetic in a way. The death of one celestial body paves the way for new stars, planets, and maybe even life in this universe. In fact, the very elements that make up our planet and our bodies were once scattered across the cosmos by events like this. So when we look at Betelgeuse and anticipate its grand finale, we're not just spectators at a cosmic event, we're witnesses to the ongoing story of the universe, a story in which we are both actors and heirs to the legacy of stars. We've explored the impact of Betelgeuse's potential supernova from the micro to the macro scale from our backyard view to the universal narrative. Now let's focus on Betelgeuse itself. 
What could the star's grand finale reveal about the star and why it's such an enticing subject for astronomers? First of all, Betelgeuse is a bit of an oddball in the stellar family. It's a red supergiant, yes, but it also exhibits variable brightness, which has puzzled scientists for years. Its explosion could finally offer some answers. Why does it dim and brighten? Is it due to massive star spots, kind of like our sun's sunspots, but on a much grander scale? Or is it due to some internal process we don't yet understand? Here's another kicker. Betelgeuse is spinning faster than it should be for a star of its age and size. What's going on here? Some scientists think that it might have swallowed a smaller companion star at some point in its past. Observing the details of its supernova might provide clues to validate or debunk this stellar cannibalism theory. Then there's the question of the elements it will scatter into the universe when it goes boom. By examining the spectrum of the explosion, we can get an inventory list of sorts, a cosmic recipe card that tells us what Betelgeuse was really made of. This is incredibly valuable data because the compositions of stars tell us about the conditions in the universe when they formed. Let's not forget about the shock wave. The explosion will send a burst of energy rippling through the interstellar medium. How this shock wave interacts with the dust and gas particles in its path could reveal a lot about the environment Betelgeuse resides in. It's like watching a rock splashing into a pond, but the pond is the cosmos, and the ripples are a blend of X-rays and gamma rays. In essence, Betelgeuse's ultimate fate is more than a mere light show. It's a golden research opportunity. It allows us to fine-tune our models and hypotheses about stars and the larger cosmic theater they belong to. So when Betelgeuse finally does take its final bow, it won't just be an end, it will be a new beginning for our understanding of the universe. As our focus on Betelgeuse broadens into a greater appreciation of the cosmic stage, it's clear that the spectacle is far from over. This red supergiant is not just an isolated marvel, it's a compelling chapter in a longer story, one filled with questions, surprises, and insights that span the very fabric of the universe. If you've enjoyed this exploration, you'll want to check out the next video that's on your screen now. I'm sure you'll love it, and thank you for watching.